5.5, we look at inverse functions. And for a bunch of ordered pairs, to find the inverse of those ordered pairs, we just flip-flop the x and the y. So if these three ordered pairs are our function, its inverse would contain the ordered pairs 5 comma 2, 8 comma 8, and 11 comma 14. The nice thing about this is if you have a graph and you know a bunch of points on that graph, you could graph the inverse of, of it by simply taking all the ordered pairs and swapping the x's and the y's. A lot of times you're going to have an equation though. To, do, to deal with that, to find its inverse, again you switch the x and the y, so x equals y plus 4, and now we solve for y. y equals x minus 4. That is the inverse of the equation y equals x plus 4. But they're not always that easy. They get a little more complicated. And with these two, there's not even a y to switch with the x. But you got to remember that this function notation is essentially the same thing as y. So we're going to start by writing x equals y plus 7 over 5. And now we solve for y, showing all of our work along the way. we end up with y equals 5x minus 7. But we didn't start out with y, we started out with f of x. So what we do to finish this off, we use function notation again. This f to the negative 1 of x means inverse of f. So we would say f inverse x equals 5x minus 7. The second one, same idea, x equals 3y cubed plus 1, we solve for y, divide by 3, and now we have to get rid of the power, so we're going to raise to the reciprocal. So the inverse of g is equal to x minus 1 over 3 to the 1 third. We'll start with the second bullet point here. If we have two functions and they're inverses of each other, we generally don't refer to them using different letters, we generally would refer to them as f and f inverse, or g and g inverse, or h and h inverse. But the definition of inverses is if the two functions are inverses of each other, then when we take the function composition, f of g and g of x, we end up with just plain x as a result. So we'll look at the left-hand pair first, and we're going to find f of g of x. So function f says 1 fourth times something minus 3, the something that goes there is g of x, so 12 plus 4x. And now we simplify. 3 plus x minus 3 equals x. And then we compose them the other way, g of f. Function g says take 12 plus 4 times something that something is going to be 1 fourth x minus 3. And again, we simplify. 12 plus x minus 12 equals x. 
since we ended up with x in both cases, f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Now let's look at the second pair. We start with f of g of x. Actually, it doesn't matter which way you start first. But f says take 3 times something minus 2. That something is 1 third x plus 2. And remember, this is distributing. You have to take the 3 times both, both the things in parentheses. We get x plus 6 minus 2. And that's equal to x plus 4, not just x. So here, we can stop. We don't even need to try the other composition. We know that f of g doesn't equal x. f and g are not inverses of each other. The horizontal line test is similar to the vertical line test. The vertical line test tells us whether or not a graph is a function. This parabola is a function because it passes the vertical line test. The horizontal line test tells us if that function's inverse is a function. So if I draw a horizontal line through this graph, it hits more than one spot, so the inverse of this graph would not be considered a function. What the inverse of this actually looks like is a sideways type parabola. So for any x value, there's two outputs, meaning that it's not a function. And if we say that a function is one to one, what we're saying is that each y value of that function corresponds to exactly one x value. What that's saying is that graphically it passes the vertical line test and the horizontal line test, both of them. And a function f has an inverse function, a function that whose, that, whose inverse is also a function, if and only if it's one-to-one, -one, if and only if it passes the vertical and horizontal line tests. So the question here is, are these functions one-to-one? -one? We start by asking, is it a function? So f of x, this first one, it's a, it's a quadratic, so it's a parabola. Yes, it's a function. Does it have an inverse? Yeah, everything has an inverse. We could find it. We switch the x and the y. And then, if so, is the inverse a function? If we do the horizontal line test, we find out, no, the inverse is not a function. So this is not one-to-one. For x plus 1 cubed, that graph looks something like this. It passes the vertical line test. It is a function. We could find its inverse. And it also passes the horizontal line test. So since it passes the, both the horizontal line test and the vertical line test, x plus 1 cubed is 1 to 1. So to check to see if you know what's going on, find the inverse of this function.